Thanks for checking out this week's message. No matter where you are, we hope that you'll be inspired and know that you're part of our one family. If you enjoy the ministry of our church, you can help us share messages like this by supporting us financially. Just press the give button at onechurchsc.org. It's quick, easy, and secure. Now let's prepare our hearts for this week's message. Back to a series I started uh, the week before called Limitless. I want to talk to you this morning about limitless supply. Again, we're looking at the miraculous catch, so it doesn't take rocket scientists to figure out what I'm going to be talking about. And so if you have your Bible open, if you don't have one, we'll give you one. First of all, it'll be on the screen, uh, and we want to welcome back our, our live audience uh, as we, we paused for a few moments as we had our presentation earlier. So we're glad that you're back with us. Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 1. One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, really better to say a lake, big lake, okay, Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, who of course we will know as Peter a little later in his journey, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. I, I, I've been reading that over and over and over in preparation for uh, this morning and and uh, I, I can only figure that God doesn't do anything by mistake. He's a God of divine appointment. He, good, bad, or ugly. I understand I was telling Pastor Andy, who has to do uh, an incredibly difficult thing this afternoon and speaking at a funeral service, that even though it may surprise us, it doesn't surprise God. It doesn't, uh, Charlie didn't catch God off guard. He's always on time and has a perfect plan in all seasons and situations. So I can only imagine and, and reckon that, it, that the people could not have handled Jesus moonwalking on water at this point in his journey. You know what I'm saying? He didn't really need the boat. He could walk on water. You know what I'm saying? But, but at this point in the journey, very strategically, he says, can I borrow, borrow your boat and use it for a pulpit? So I don't want you to get it twisted that Jesus needed him or needs us. He just chooses us out of his amazing grace and love towards us. And so he says, can I use your boat? And he begins to preach to the crowd from that boat. Verse 4, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now, go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Verse 5, master, Simon replied, we've worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, and if you underline and mark in your Bible or highlight your app, this is a great place to underline. If you say so. If you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time... Their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A, sh a shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled, and fish were on the verge of sinking. And the fish that were filled was on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell on his knees before Jesus and said, Oh, Lord, please leave me. I'm too much of a sinner to be around you. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, this is, this is where we'll finish up. Je Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishermen of people. And soon, as they had landed, they left everything and followed him. I want to talk to you about a God of limitless supply, limitless supply. This whole series started, you with me say amen. This whole series started out of a, out of a heart that just uh, constantly thinking on uh, uh, what's the next message. And, and then being in the thick of raising two teenage girls, I, I don't know if you remember me telling you this a couple weeks ago, that the, with the upgrades to the iPhone, uh, little mama uh, was able to go in and not only uh, be better about the security, but was, was also able to limit the time on each app or the overall phone. And so uh, our daughters were shocked, especially Addison, who's not with us this morning. She was shocked when she was trying to snap, and all of a sudden it shut her down, and she was snapless. She was shocked because we limited it to an hour a day uh, on, on those social media apps. And I began to think, well, how often do we treat God as a limited God? How often do we say, well, poor is me, and wring our hands, and get to a season of fear and fret because we think God is a limited God. But then I begin to think about how, what if, what if I taught the people and was reminded myself of how he is limitless? And 
Our, our launch verse actually is in Ephesians, Ephesians 3.20. It says this, all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. He is able to do more. He is limitless. There is no limits on God. He has, he has no boundaries. I, I was thinking about this, this in the same vein. I don't know. I'm dating myself. Um, can you remember a season when you had your cell phone um, and we was watching something and they made the comment about it? Do you, I, I remember, though, vividly saying, hey, don't call me to after nine. Don't call me to after nine. Do you remember the season when you had free nights and free weekends, right? Because, man, my supply is limited, right? You don't, hey, listen, I want you to call me, girl, but don't you call me till after 9 o'clock, all right? You know what I'm saying? Because it's going to cost me, and it's going to cost my parents, and they're going to get me, or we, we, can, we can talk on the weekend, right? So I can remember that season when, when it was free nights and free weekends, and it's crazy how far advanced we have. Now we have unlimited data. Of course, they figured out a way to charge you for that unlimited data, but now you have unlimited data. And I begin to think about how God is like that. He has an unlimited supply. He never runs out. And then I begin to think about how we were going to introduce our invested campaign and how we're going to begin to raise that next phase of money into our downtown campus and how, how God is doing a work in our lives. And I want you to understand that, that it's not about what you have. It's about what he already has and just getting it out and understanding that it's his to start with. And so I wanted, to, I wanted to see how it would be to just look inside this moment and, and tap into the limitless supply. What does that look like and what do I have to do to tap in to this limitless supply that God has? The very first thought I have this morning, I have two thoughts that I want to share with you and I'll do those quickly. You know, I served for the very first time in six years in our children's ministry last week. So as I left last week, I promised myself before God, I will do all I can to bail my hay real tight and get done as quick as possible. Have mercy on our volunteers as they serve with your children, our children, back there. Uh, and God bless them. So the very first thought I want to share with you this morning, how do we tap into that limitless supply? I don't want to dilly-dally. It's just simple choices. Simple choices. Simple choices. It's not rocket science. It's just simple choices. You and I have every day a choice to make. Every season we have a choice to make. And when I look at this miracle of the, of the catch of fish, I, I see that, Peter makes the right choices as well as his friends. They make the right, and they're just simple choices. And so I want to take just a few moments to share with you about making those choices. The first thing you got to do is to offer, you have to be willing to offer Jesus your boat. This story wouldn't happen, this miracle wouldn't happen if you didn't offer your boat. Now, I believe what Furtick said several weeks ago when he preached on this subject, a different point of view, but he preached on this subject. I believe with all my heart, if Peter had said, no, you can't use my boat, that's why the text said there were two boats. Jesus would have just went to the next boat. You have a choice to make. Now, I want you to understand that you may feel special in the kingdom of God, and you are a special person, but God doesn't need us. He chooses us. And God is asking you this morning, will you offer your boat to him? Now, th this is what I want you to understand clearly with me, please. There is nothing supernatural or special about these boats. Furtick reminded us of this when we listened to him preach. I went back and listened to it again in anticipation for this preaching, again, different subject, but he, he, it, it, there was nothing special about the boats. There was nothing special about Peter. As a matter of fact, when he sees Jesus for who he is in this moment, and you will follow him several times over, he will make mistakes. There was nothing supernatural or special about Peter. It, 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 when God says, I want you to offer me your boat, when we say we want you to invest, it doesn't matter if it's 50 cents, a dollar, five dollars, seven dollars, 70 or 7,000. It, it is that God uses the things that, listen, are just simply everyday common things. I don't know where we got it twisted down through the years that God can only use the elite or only use me when I get to this level or when I get this out of my life or when I straighten this up or I don't talk like this or I don't dress like this or I don't go there, I don't do this. Look, God is, if you'll just offer him your boat, you say it's not much, good, good. If it was more, then you would try to take some of the glory. If you want to tap into a limitless supply, the first step you got to do and the choice you got to make is to offer him your boat. It is the everyday common things. And let me tell you something. Listen, I know, right? I know I'm a Neary boy, so I'm real simple. I'm just telling you, it's at face value. I'm rightly dividing the word of God. Guess what was up with those boats? They were empty. They had nothing in them. And again, the only, only thing I can figure is it just wasn't time. And by divine appointment, he was going to call Peter. And we know now this side of history 
why and what would happen. But he could have walked on water as the crowd pressed in on him. So if you don't like a big crowd, you're not going to like heaven. Everywhere he went, there was a crowd that pressed in. And he was setting the stage up to show them that he is a God that is a God of limitless supply. That he would meet their needs. That he would take care of them. And that he would never leave them nor forsake them. But they had to choose him. They had to be willing to offer their boat. And it's just the everyday common things. Listen, God, you can have my morning. You can have my midday. God, you can have my quiet time. God, you can have my work. You can, you can have my exercise time. God, I, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've been ready to leave the gym. I'm on a, on a fixed schedule because I've got a certain time to be somewhere and someone will engage me in a conversation, all right? And I'm, I'm not aggravated by that, but I, I, I am, I am going to get into that conversation. And the next thing you know, I'm looking. I'm not, I'll do it afterwards. I look and I go, wait a minute. I'm running way behind and she's already messaged me. And listen, you're normally home by this time. Why? Because I'm always about my father's business no matter where I go or what I do. And there's nothing supernatural or special about me. You can say amen. There's nothing. It's just I'm willing to offer him my boat. I'm willing to offer him the very common everyday thing. I'm, I'm willing to offer him. I can't tell you how many times we pulled up on the job site and we never even get started. It's, it's a few hours before we get started. Why? Because the person, the client has engaged us in a conversation about Jesus Christ. So it's not about the big elaborate things as Pastor Bradley said a moment ago. God nowhere through his word ever, ever acknowledges, boasts, pushes up the big. It's always the small things, the widow's might, the little oil and the little flour. Or if when Gideon's army is too big, he says, no, it's got to be less. God's not looking for all the greatness that you have. He'll take your empty boat. You just have to be willing to offer him your empty boat. So the first simple choice you've got to make is just to offer him and the second choice you've got to make every single day is not only offer him your boat, but you've got to choose to obey him. You've got to choose to obey him. Now, how do I do that? Again, it's simple, but I don't know why in the world we don't do this. If, if you want to see a miracle happen, if you want to see God show his might and get all the glory and flex his amazing strength and his limitless supply, you've got to offer him even the emptiness. And you've got to be willing to listen to me. Take him at his word. Just take him at his word. Oh, I don't care how many verses you can spit back at me. I don't care how, how, how well educated you are in verse in the Bible. I don't care that you have memorized in order the 66 books of the Bible. I don't care that you have memorized and can recite the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. I'm not interested that you can, you can quote to me John 3.16 or you can recite to me the Ten Commandments without even looking or having a cheat sheet or clip notes on any of it. I'm not even interested in that. I mean, that doesn't really impress me. What impresses me is what are you doing with the one verse that you know? You say, amen, amen, preach, preach, amen, I believe, amen, but you don't really take him at his word. You think he's able to save you from hell, but you won't trust him with a dollar out of your pocket. You don't want your kinfolks to die and go to hell, but you don't want to tell them about Jesus. You don't want to just offer your empty boat. It's my boat. And it's really nothing. I don't know why in the world they'd even want it. I don't even want them to see my boat. It's pathetic. Just like the man with the withered hand, God did not ask for his good hand. He asked for his withered hand. And the instant he went to stretch his hand out, the miracle happened. You're not going to see the incredible catch, the supernatural catch that I'll talk about in a minute, until you do the simple choice, which is to offer him your boat and then to obey Jesus. Take Jesus at his word. Jesus says to Simon, he says this, he says, listen, he says, go out where it's deep. And I told you to underline it. You knew I was going to talk about it. He says, go out where it's deep. And then this is what Peter says to him. Peter says, well, if you say so. And he launches out into the deep. Now, I, I want to take a few moments and I, I, and I want to unpack this for us. I want us to look real closely at it, at, at the situation. And we know this. It's not the first time you've heard this, 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 this text preached or talked about but I want, to share you, I want to share my heart and what God's dealing with me. 
We worry about all these numbers, all these figures, all this stuff. You know, it's all, 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 and I'm not saying that these things are not to be concerned about, but, but, but how often do we miss what God is trying to do just by simply not taking Him at His word? He said, just go out into the deep. Now, I want you, I want you to get it in context. And then Peter, I, he, I, he scratches his head. He says something, you know, but he says, if you say so, and I want you to understand why he tells Jesus. He says, listen, we fished all night, and we've caught nothing. So I want you to get this morning, if you want to see the supernatural supply of God, if you want to see the limitless supply of God, if you want God to do the miraculous in your life, in this church, in this community, and around the world, then you have got to make these simple choices. It's to offer him your boat, even though nobody else likes your boat. Even though it's not a ranger. It might be a, a little John boat. You offer him your boat. Even though it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, it's just empty. Offer him your boat. He wants your empty boat. He works better, as a matter of fact, with empty boats. And then just take him at his word. It may not make sense. And this is, this is exactly what we see. This is exactly the setting. Even if you are tired, take Jesus at his word. I mean, we've worked hard all night, Jesus, and we didn't catch anything. I mean, have you been tired before? Were you jet lagged, Joe? Were you tired? I mean, you ever, you ever you ever flown or traveled for two days? End up back here on a Saturday, get back in the pulpit on a Sunday morning. You ever worked all week? And, and listen, I, you understand when, when he says that they worked on, he is implying to Jesus, yo, yo we are tired, I'm wore out. I'm dog tired. That's tired. I'm tired. But if you say so. How often do we just leave it at, I'm tired, I've tried, I've done, I've, 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 I've been doing this. Literally, when he walks up and he asks him, he's washing his nets. He's done. He's putting his nets up. He, he, he said, we're finished for today. We may come back tonight, but we're finished for today. And, and literally what he says to him and what I want you to get this morning is that when he tells him to go into the deep and he literally says, at your word, I'll go. If you say so, I'll go. If I'll take you at your word. And he's tired and he's saying, you mean I got to do it again? Some of you don't know if you can pray that prayer one more time. Some of you don't know if you can come home one more time. You don't know if you got it in you to get through this season one more. All that I've been through, all that I've done, you mean I've got to go through this again? I want to assure you this morning, our God does not make a mistake. We've got to get to a place where it's the simple choices in life that we see the supernatural. That we say, God, if you say so, his word is filled with promises, hundreds of promises, but they're all based off principles. It's the precepts. It's not just saying, okay, God, I'm going to stand here and wait on you. I'm tired. You know I'm tired. I'm going to have, no, 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 go into the deep. You've got to take him at, at his word even if you're tired. Secondly, even if it's at the worst time. I don't know if that's happened to you, man. I'm telling you, just I can be divinely interrupted, and I, 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 I promise, or I say I swear, I promise, it's always at the worst time. I am divinely inconvenienced. I got something to do, somewhere to be. Don't you know how bad a time, and listen, again, again, God didn't wear Timex or Rolex. He's time. He doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber. He didn't even take a smoke break. I know it messes some of your theology up. He said he never let us slip. He wouldn't let us. God doesn't, even when it's at the worst time, you have to take him at his word. And when you say, what do you see? They fished all night. Any good angler in his right mind worth his weight in fish knows that you don't fish in that area during the day and in the deep. That lake was over 150 Feet deep in its deepest areas. It was also the lowest point in that geography. Could it be that God is saying, I got to get you into the deep before I can show you just how powerful I am? And could it be that He comes to us in the lowest points of our lives when our boats are really empty and we're tired and we've tried and we don't know if we've got one more round in us? 
We don't know if we can go a step further, but just over the horizon is our breakthrough. If we just push in and understand that it's a simple choice, that I shall not be moved, I will not give up, nothing will separate me from the love of God. And if you say so, God, I'll go back into the deep even at the worst time during the day. You've got to learn to take him at his word. The thing he says to you in the daylight is the same thing that is true in the nighttime. He is the same God on the mountain, the same God in the valley. Peter says, if you say so, and he launches back into the deep, you have to learn to take him at his word, even if you're tired, even if it's at the worst time, and even when you think it is too late. I stick to that, that they fished all night. There's no fish there. Not biting. We're done. And can you imagine how fatigued they were because of the type of nets that they threw had lead weights on one end and floaters on the other end and how often they would throw those and pull those back in and throw those and pull those back in and throw those and pull back. And all night long they'd been fishing and he says, listen, now that I've borrowed your boat and used it for a pulpit, will you just take me at my word and go a little deeper and I will show you who I really am. And some of you, you've tried and you've tried and you've tried and you've tried church and you've tried this religious thing and you've tried to pray and you've tried to study your Bible and you've tried to tithe and you've tried all these things and everything just keeps falling apart even at the worst time God is saying this and saying that and he's even sent me at the worst time. And I want you to understand you still got to take him at his word even if you think it's too late. If you take notes, I want you to get this. Faith operates in the now. Faith operates in the now. Faith is not about what's coming down the road. Yes, it it, it encompasses that, but faith operates in the now. You see, if you'll learn to take him at his word and offer him your boat and obey what he tells you to do, if faith operates in the now, if you act right now, God will set you on the road to what he has for you. Faith operates now. If you'll give a dollar now, if you'll give your life now, if you'll give him your life now, he will set you on the road for what he has for you. Now, you, you stay with me a moment. I know that you're super spiritual and you got all this figured out. Please. But just entertain me. A little later on, Simon would become Peter. And we keep saying here, even Luke, Dr. Luke in the New Living Translation goes Simon Peter a lot of times. He, he, he refers to him as Simon Peter, but he's still Simon at this point. But if you look at Matthew 16, verse 18, this is what Jesus says to him. In, in Matthew 16 verse 18. Listen, I'm just going to tell you this. He changes his name to Petros, to Peter. This is the word for rock. And you know what he tells him in that verse of scripture in Matthew's account? He tells him that upon this rock I will build my church, not Peter's church, his church. Now wait a minute, wait a minute. We're talking about a fisherman, right? Yes, we're talking about a fisherman. That, listen, that if he had not offered him his boat, he would have went to the next boat. But because he offered him his boat and then he obeyed what God said, he took him at his word and he says, if you say so, even though I think you're just a carpenter in order to stick to making furniture and maybe stick to preaching and I'll stick to fishing, but if you say so, I'll launch it. Why? Because faith operates in the now. Now. I don't have time to wait till tomorrow to pray. I got to pray now. If God says to do it, I'm going to do it now. Stop putting it off. Do it now. Why? Because when you operate now, it sets you on your road to what God has for you. I don't know what the road has been to bring you here, but God's brought you here this morning for me to remind you that he's got your back and he has a plan for you and a future for you to prosper you and to bless you so that you can be a blessing to others because he should later say to Peter, you're no longer Simon, but Peter, and I'm going to use you to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail again. And I want to fast forward over into Acts. I'm going to preach for it. So with Acts chapter 2 verse 14, it literally says that Peter with all of the others, Peter stood up and he boldly began to preach. And on that day, not only did they fill the boat, not only did they fill the boat with all these fish years ago, but in this moment, over 3,000 people was added to the kingdom of God from somebody that was just willing to offer their boat that was empty, that was ordinary, and just take him at his word that he said, just step out. Just trust me. Just move your big toe. Faith operates in the now and it sets you up for the greatness he has and it will show you that he is a limitless God. They would often think they're ignorant, uneducated, drunken fishermen. But it was the Holy Ghost power of God 
and revival broke out. And the church in 2019 is still preaching and live and strong and powerful and not limited by man's thoughts or abilities, but all under God's authority over what Peter did. Why? Because he offered him his boat. And he just took him at his word. He obeyed him. Even though he was tired, even though it was at the worst time, this is such an inconvenient time for me to, to give my life, to sign up to serve more, to give an extra dollar. Do you know how bad it is? Do you know how limitless the God you serve is? Do you think Peter might have thought for a moment about how God is God? And the very boat that he had, the wood that it was made out of, that God actually spoke the tree into life. You see, we don't think about stuff like that. We say, that's mine. I did that. No, I haven't met a person yet that's taken mud up from the ground and blew into it and created life. I've yet to meet anyone else walk on water or raise the dead. Oh, I know there's some that want you to think they have or they do. But legitimately. And all you got to do is take him at his word. All you have to do. A simple, neary, Mill Hill high school dropout. A drunkard, drug addict, and whoremonger. That from a universal point of view, like Google Maps would drop the pen right down in United Assembly of God in 1998, Easter Sunday, and say, if you'll offer me your boat and just take me at my word, I could barely read or write. I will show you great and mighty things. If he could do that for me, if he could do that for Peter. Can you imagine what he could do for you if you just simply take him at his word? And and what happens next, this is my second thought. If you'll offer him your boat this morning and every morning, if you'll simply take him at his word, if you'll just say, if it says it in here, I'm going to do it, I'm going to believe it, I'm going to build my life on it, I'm going to base every decision that I make off this, you know what they experience next? By making simple choices, supernatural catches. You see, some of you, some of you need to stop amening and start acting. Well, see, some of you have gotten good at it. You amen, amen, preacher, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo, that's good stuff. Amen, I believe. Amen, amen. Listen, I, I'm good. I like to check your ameners every now and again. Some of you have been amening long enough. It's time to get active. It's time to say, here's my boat. You may be, you may be tired. You may be frustrated. You, you, listen, you may have even failed. You may be a failure. That's Okay. These boys had failed. They had nothing. Empty boats. Nothing. They were tired. I sense a bit of irritation in them when Jesus says, well, you do it my way. So you may be here. And listen, they were finished. You may may be here and you think it's too late. It's finished. It's already. No, there's no way. I am here to tell you this morning, if you will offer him your boat and you will obey Jesus, you will take him at his word and get into the deep, And get into the deep. Someone say, you're leading us. No, if you will get into the deep, it's where the miracles happen, all right? It's in our lowest. He works best in the mess. You've heard me say that a million times. I I was telling our trustees this morning, we got a situation. Once we get through this situation, it'll be something else. Why? Because every time we get through something, we need reminded that we need God. And so he's going to keep us dependent on him. So don't ever think it's going to be a tiptoe through the tulips. But if you'll offer him your boat and you will uh, obey what he says, you will find a supernatural catch. And watch this. It is contagious. You're not finished. 
It's contagious. Because when they begin to fill their boat, they realize quickly, we're not dealing with an average carpenter. It filled their nets to where they were beginning to tear. Their boat was beginning to sink and they yelled to the shoreline, Hey, come! And so the sons of Zebedee, they come out, James and John, they come out, it fills their boat, and then when they get back, they go on and he says, Listen, don't worry, I'm going to make you fishers of men, and I've told you already that we will fast forward over into Acts, and Peter on the day of Pentecost would stand up and he would boldly under the power of the Holy Ghost proclaim Jesus Christ, let them understand. He would quote the book of Joel. And I'm telling you, revival broke out. And I want to remind you of what Paul wrote in Ephesians, our launch verse. He says, listen, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above everything we could think or imagine, dream possible. Why? How? By the power that works in us. Just empty, ordinary boats. So you offer him your boat. I don't have much, but what I got is yours. And the crazy thing is this. Guess what? He wants it. He chose it. I, he could have walked on the water. He could have moonwalked. He could have pulled an MJ all flashy and stylish and begin to preach. No. He said, I need your boat. I need your boat. Now, you may not think it's much. You may be tired. You may be aggravated. You may feel like a failure, and that's good. There's a prerequisites of supernatural catches. Because not only will you never, ever run out of oil and flour, but somebody that's watching your life, they will realize where you get your oil and your flour. They will begin to understand. And we will thank God for technology and doctors, and modern medicine. But we really know who the great physician is. Because we've tapped in to a life-given, limitless God. Stand with me, please. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, we love you this morning. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you chose us. In these moments, as we close, I am the first to say to you, Father, I will be fully invested. I will offer you my boat. I know often, often, I'm ashamed of it. But you want it. I'm offering my boat. And God, help me to take you at your word. Heads bowed, eyes closed this morning. Your launching place toward the deep is salvation in Jesus Christ. There's no ABC. There's no special formula. There's no secret. There's no... There's nothing special about me. There's, again, there's no side door or back door or secret passage or a funny knock or anything that will get you into the kingdom of God. There is but one name. That name is Jesus. And the Bible tells us that you have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ was the Son of God who lived a perfect life, who died on Calvary's cross for the joy that was set before him. That joy is you, me, and the whole world. But he arose on the third day from a borrowed tomb. As we look toward Easter, one of the most powerful, incredible moments in all of history, the split time, he did that so that right now in this moment, if you will confess that, he will supernaturally save your life. So if you're here and you've never cried out, I don't care how tired you are, I don't care how many times you've tried on your own, but if you're here and you have never accepted Christ, I want you to say something like this. You don't have to say it out loud. Say, Jesus, save me. Forgive me. I confess you as Lord and as Savior. I don't have much, but what I have, I offer you. In Jesus' name, nobody looking around. If you're here this morning, the Bible's clear. He doesn't want you to be ashamed of him. He wants you to confess him before man. So I'm going to make it easy in the first step. If you're here this morning, you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. On the count of three, I want you to shoot your hand up. Ready? One, two, three. Boom. Say, that was me. I prayed. Okay? All right? Maybe you're here this morning and you have absolutely keep keeping your boat to yourself. It has been a minute since Jesus has been in the boat with you. You've struggled, you're tired, you're fatigued, you've, you feel like a failure. Hey, I've got good news. Those are all, those are all set up for God to do an incredible supernatural move.
He's a miracle working God. You simply have to offer it to him afresh and anew. Our altar will be open. Won't you move? Look this way, Pastor Thad. Will you lead us in an, in an offertory song? I mean, in, a, in, in an altar call song. Will you do that, please, as we offer ourselves, offertory, as we offer ourselves afresh and anew to God? You just have to offer him your boat, and you just have to obey him. Did you know that the Bible teaches us that he says that you will give, and it will be given unto you? But it won't be given unto you until you give. So will you give him your boat? Will you give him your boat? Will you do what he says? Won't you come? Hey, thanks so much for being here with us today. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week online at onechurchsc.org and on social media at onechurchsc. We believe God has something unique to say to you, and our hope is that you feel his love stronger today than ever before. Thanks again for being here with us, and have a great week.